This video is about meningococcus, which is also called as Neisseria meningitidis. As the name suggests, it causes meningitis commonly in children. Neisseria meningitidis has a capsule around it, which helps it to escape from complement-mediated phagocytosis, and this capsule is a virulence factor. I made a simplified flashcard on meningococcus, which will help you to revise meningococcus in just two minutes once you watch this video. Not just that, I'll be making flashcards on so many other topics to come, and I'll be uploading it in a specific site. The link is in the description. Click on it right now and gain access to all my upcoming flashcards starting from today. I'm sure you'll find it very, very useful. Welcome to Bit with Made Simple. If you are new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you can keep watching all my upcoming videos for free. And also check out my second channel, 2 Minute Doc, where you can learn about various drugs and diseases in just 2 minutes. The link is in the description of this video. Humans are the only host for meningococcus. The source of meningococcus is usually the nasopharynx of carriers. These people are usually asymptomatic, but they'll be spreading infections to the nearby people who are susceptible to the infection. When an asymptomatic carrier who has, who has meningococcus in his nasopharynx comes into contact with a susceptible individual and coughs in front of him, along with the generation of respiratory droplets, he'll be spreading the meningococcus infection from his nasopharynx to the susceptible individual. And once this person gets the infection, first the bacteria reaches the, his nasopharynx. And since he's susceptible, with the help of factors like IgA proteases, allicins, what it can do is that it can enter the bloodstream of this person and it can reach to various sites most commonly brain, causing meningitis. IgA proteases and adhesins are other, other virulence factors of meningococcus. Once in the bloodstream, with the help of factors like endotoxins and lipopolysaccharide of meningococcus, which are of course virulence factors of meningococcus, what it can do is that it can damage the endothelium of the blood vessels, leading to endothelial injury, leading to uh, excess of fluid loss, because of increased vascular permeability, there will be increased fluid loss leading to hypovolemic shock. And there can be a very serious complication called as disseminated intravascular coagulation, which is also called as consumption coagulopathy, where there will be multiple thrombosis throughout the body. At the same time, there will be multiple bleeding into multiple bleeding and multi-organ failure, which is a, so this disseminated intravascular coagulation is a serious complication. Septicemia is Another thing which occurs with meningococcus, in which there will be uh, excess of bacterial load inside the bloodstream. Another feature of meningococcal infection is the presence of a characteristic rash, which is called as palpable purpuric rashes. Usually purpuric rashes are not palpable, but in the case of meningococcus, these purpuric rashes are palpable. Along with that, we know that meningococcus causes septicemia and meningitis, just to revise. Another serious complication of meningococcus is called Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome, in which there will be characteristic thing, which is bilateral adrenal hemorrhage. Another bacteria which causes Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome is Staphylococcus aureus. Along with that, in Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome, these patients can have shock, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and multi organ failure, which are the other manifestations of meningococcus. But the characteristic finding is bilateral adrenal hemorrhage. Diagnosis, for diagnosis we have to do lumbar puncture and we take the CSF of the patient in ter with sterile precautions and we do various tests like uh, capsular antigen detection, biochemical analysis in which we'll find elevated protein whereas decreased glucose levels and when we culture this uh, CSF on blood agar and chocolate agar we can identify this bacteria, we can uh, grow this on BHI broth which is brain heart infusion broth. On doing lumbar puncture, we'll find the, find the elevation or raised CSF pressure. For carriers, what we have to do is that uh, we know that this bacteria stays in the nasopharynx of carriers. So we have to take nasopharyngeal swab and we have to culture this on Thayer Martin medium, which is the specific medium for or selective medium for meningococcus. So this is a very important point to remember. The antibodies against meningococcus can be detected in the serum of patients, uh, which is called a serological test, which can be done by ELISA. And highly sensitive and specific methods like polymerase chain reaction, abbreviated as PCR, which is a molecular method, can also be used. 
Apart from that, meningococcus is oxidase and catalase positive. And while doing gram stain, we can identify gram negative diplococcus in pairs, which are capsulated. The drug of choice for treatment of meningococcus is third generation cephalosporin. Commonly, ceftriaxone or cefotaxime are preferred. For prevention of the infection, you can use vaccination. The commonly used vaccines, vaccine is meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine, which is contraindicated in less than three years old children. However, for that age group, we can use meningococcal conjugate vaccine, which can be given in less than three years old children. If you want to gain access to this simplified flashcard which I have made on meningococcus and many more other topics to come, just go to the link in the description right now and gain access to my all, all, all my upcoming flashcards which is going to help you to memorize things more easily than ever. So the link is in the description so don't forget to check it out. You can support my channel by donating on buymeacoffee.com, the link is in the description of this video. And if you are a teacher and you want high quality lecture slides trick to take great classes for your students, visit my Patreon page and know more about it. The link is in the description as well. If you like this video, make sure to smash the like button right now and share this video to all your friends so that they'll be benefited as well. And comment below if you want more videos like this. Do not forget to press the subscribe button the bell icon next to it so that you'll not miss out any of my upcoming videos. And it is cool to learn about various drugs and diseases in just two minutes. So don't forget to check out my second channel 2 Minute Doc as well where you can learn about various drugs and diseases on the go in just 2 minutes. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I'll see you guys in my next video.